seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we just static fired this setup right here. There were two things that I wanted to test out. First of all, I wanted to see if I could use the Tektite A flight computer with a Tektite A pyro kit, which is essentially just three MOSFETs put together to control a large amount of current to ignite the motor. I wanted to see if I could use that to ignite a motor. And as you can see in the video, we did light the motor. I want to create a landing rocket, but I don't want to just create a landing rocket for the technical challenge. I want there to actually be a real world impact. And for that to work, we need to deploy a payload at the Apogee. I took some inspiration from their Cicada project, but I also wanted to change it up. So I want to deploy five payloads at Apogee, which is these yellow pieces. And right now I just have some placeholder pieces, but eventually we're going to have sensors and GPS on these payload pieces. Since this is going to land, we're going to have one ascent motor, which will power it up. Then it's just gonna turn around and passively fall down using the fins, which means we don't split apart and release parachutes at Apogee. Instead, we're passively falling down using the fins to be stable on the way down, and then at like 400 feet above the ground, instead of at Apogee, which is like 2,000 feet above the ground, right? We will ignite another motor to slow ourselves down and deploy it parachutes using that motor's ejection charge. So notice that the ascent motor's ejection charge is doing nothing, and I thought that instead of just wasting it with a baffle or something, we might as well use it to deploy our payload instead of using some complicated mechanism with a servo. You'll see that I essentially made a cavity here. And with these are flush to the outside and their friction fit in. And I confirmed that it was a very good friction fit. And then on this side, you'll see there's a blank, there's blank space here, right? So what'll happen is there's gonna be a high pressure on this left side of the payload. There's gonna be low pressure, just one atmosphere outside of it. And this will cause the payload to fly out this side and I was really not sure if this would work because as you see there's a large cavity above this so there's actually gonna be high pressure pushing this down into the floor and increasing the friction of these payload pieces inside the thing inside the rocket but it turned out to work which I'm pretty excited about in a future design I'm just gonna make the gases routed directly to this left side. Let's talk about why I was worried that this wouldn't work and why I took so many pre safety precautions. To be clear, do not try this at home, okay? Unless you know what you're doing, do not try this at home. So first of all, I used the Aerotech F278R and this is the weakest motor I had lying around. It's an order of magnitude less powerful than the motor I plan on using the real thing, but it's powerful enough that it will still achieve my objective of seeing if this is feasible or not. So I was worried that because this thing is so hard to push out since there's so much friction holding it in, I was worried that the motor might fly out of the top. And this is why I actually want that instead of the whole case blowing up. So I made these walls really thick and I make this retainer piece really thin because if the motor flies out of the top, it's not gonna fly very high and it's going to be mostly constrained within its um, a small 10 foot radius. And we were standing 40 to 50 feet away from this when we static fired it. Next up, I was also worried that the electronics would not work. I was worried that it would catch on fire because most of the electronics are only rated for two to three amps continuous. And I've heard from online forums that an igniter can pull up to five amps, but it turned out to work. And I'm really excited about that. Finally, to be safe, I basically used metal stakes to hold this thing into the ground. And by doing that, we were able to prevent any side forces that might come from the rocket motor. So now let's see what happened after the static fire and take it apart. All right, so we are back from the static fire. Let's take a look at how it did. So first of all, we can see that this was in here like this. And when the ejection charge fired, which we actually have the cap over here for, you can see the pattern that the ejection charge made on top of the payload when it was knocked out. Then you can see that it's quite charred in here. 
but it looks like everything is okay mostly except for a little dent over here which indicates to me that the rocket well, even though it's 3d printed can't handle it now let's take off the retainer take out the burnt motor here it is looks good to me i think that was a successful static fire i think this is a sign that i can continue on with this project this proves that we can ignite a motor using our 2S battery and just the, um, like a servo extension cable. And it shows us that we can eject payloads out the side of the rocket using just the ejection charge gases. Make sure to subscribe to see if we can land a rocket and see if we can successfully deploy this payload and collect meteorological data and scientific data.